Piracy Watch with attorney Sarah Jane Sagiton, exploring the concept of intellectual property rights and protection, teaching you how to protect what you create. And now, here is your host, Sarah Jane Sagita. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Piracy Watch with me, attorney Sarah Jane Sagiton. We'd like to thank, of course, the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines for bringing this show to you, the first radio show ever to talk about issues on your intangible property. Joining me this morning is attorney Louis Calvario from the Copyright Division of the Intellectual Property Office. Good morning, Attorney Louis. Good morning, Sarah. Hi. So, uh, the, a couple of weeks back, we had you as a guest, and uh, we were talking about the needs to amend the copyright, uh, copyright amendment, uh, to make copyright amendments to the uh, current copyright IP code. Yes. So, uh, again, what are the salient <laughs> provisions of these amendments? Well, the Copyright Amendment Bill uh, includes several uh, salient features. First of all, it provides for the creation of a Bureau of Copyright that would uh, service the needs of copyright-based industries and stakeholders uh, in order to give more focus uh, and rally more resources for these sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, will we be the first country to create a Bureau of Copyright? Well, Not necessarily. In other countries, they have uh, copyright offices which are usually independent from their IP office like for example in the in the US they have a uh, US patent and trademark office but the copyright office is with Congress it's with, with Congress. a legislative body so it's mm -hmm. part of Congress mm -hmm. uh, okay so uh, so far we have a Bureau of Trademarks and we have a Bureau yes. of Patents and they both act as like re a register of deeds for lands, but they are, uh, yes. they are registered. Uh, they ha they um, keep up a registry of trademarks and patents, so intellectual, intangible properties. But the Bureau of Copyright, will you also be keeping a sort of registry for all songs, poems, books, etc.? Uh, uh, under the present law, the Intellectual Property Code or RA eighty two ninety three, and even under the amendment to the IP Code. The National Library is still the depository of all literary and artistic works. Mm -hmm. However, uh, a week ago, we signed a memorandum of agreement with the National Library uh, appointing us as agent or deputizing us mm -hmm. as uh, a receiving office for the National Library. So after we have uh, formulated, operationalized the entire system, we will be receiving uh, copyright deposits in behalf of the National Library and we will be issuing certificates of copyright registration. registration. So uh, the Intellectual Property Office starting this month or is it already operational disagreement with National Well, Library? we're still in the technical working group uh, mm -hmm. phase. We, uh, we have to iron out several uh, operational mm -hmm. uh, issues but hopefully we would have the registry by uh, early this year, early maybe within year. the first quarter, we hope so. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the things that I envision when you do start uh, operating this uh, registry of copyrighted works is where do you store the works? Because under the law, normally an artist or an author <coughs> deposits a copy of the work with the National Library for deposit purposes, right, evidentiary yes. purposes. It is not required of the author to deposit in order to obtain copyright. That's right. Yes. So well, th there's no requirement. So uh, when the IPO starts becoming an annex to the National Library, will you have a warehouse? What if, for example, I'm a painter and I have mm -hmm. a like um, 10 feet by 10 feet painting canvas that I want to deposit to the IPO? Will that be, will you be able to house Well, the, the IPO has, uh, well, we, ha we have warehouses where we keep some of our uh, patent and trademark documents. Mm -hmm. And uh, the IPO will also uh, relegate some, some of the spaces in the warehouses mm -hmm. for the, at least the temporary storage of all the literary and artistic works that would be deposited. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the, well, the, the initial agreement between the, the National Library and the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines is that we will receive this, uh, the, uh, these deposits, these uh, literary and artistic works from them, and then eventually we would have to uh, give them Mm -hmm. uh, for a permanent storage, deliver them to the National Library, to be the National Library. because uh, still under the law, they're still the depository mm -hmm. of literary and artistic still works. But we will uh, will help them with the uh, with uh, with the receipt of all these literary and artistic works 
especially if these works come from the provinces from the other regions within the philippines so it will now be very much easy for our authors and uh, creative people to deposit their works with the national library through the ip office but they don't need to deposit the original it's well, possible to give you just well, a copy well under the law and even under the amendment to the law it says there uh, to deposit the original, oh, the original or copies of the original and usually uh, the the practice is to give the national library the best editions or the best copies of the work, of the work. Ah, i see mm -hmm. so if it's possible the original if not a copy yes of or the, original. the law requires two copies of the work two copies of the work all right there you have it ladies and gentlemen for all of you authors out there you have to remember first of all a uh, deposit is not mandatory if uh, if you're thinking that it's a requirement to obtain copyright, it, it's, it is not necessarily so because under the law and under our treaty obligations and international law, copyright is obtained from the moment of creation. So deposit is not required. However, we do encourage you to deposit copies of your works with the National Library and pretty soon with the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines in order to have evidence. All right, so you can prove that you created that work ahead of time and that you own that work. Okay, moving on to some news. Agents of the National Bureau of Investigation seized 34 million pesos worth of jeans with counterfeit brands in successive raids of stores in Pasay City. The jeans carried fake jag and tribal tags. The raids stemmed from complaints lodged by Beatriz Yonzon, Vice President for Administration of Phil Pacific Apparel Corporation. In a report to NBI Director Magtanggol Gatdula, the NBI IP Rights Division said a total of 28,641 pairs and pieces of jeans and shirts of JAG and tribal brands were confiscated. Owners and operators of the establishments are facing charges for violation of Section 155 Trademark Infringement and Section 168 for unfair competition in relation to the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. Okay, 125 or rather 1.2 billion pesos worth of fake Louis Vuitton products were seized and destroyed following a government crackdown versus counterfeiters of the famed French luxury brand. The destroyed counterfeits were seized from shopping malls, retail outlets, and warehouses in and around Metro Manila. According to lawyer Rona Vergara, the French fashion house owns some 50 of the world's most famous and valuable brands, and that includes Louis Vuitton, Marc Jacobs, Fendi, and Celine. Products claiming to be Louis Vuitton were proliferating in the country, but the genuine Louis Vuitton products can be bought only from a Louis Vuitton store in Greenbelt 5 in Makati. Okay, going back to the Copyright Amendment Bill, Attorney Louis Calvario here from the Intellectual Property Office joining me this morning on Piracy Watch. Okay, Attorney Louis, let's go back to the amendments that the IPO is proposing to the um, current IP code. Uh, what other uh, sale and provisions aside from the registry are you going to amend? Of course, this uh, amendment to the copyright law of the IP code was originally meant to be... Uh, an implementation of our treaty commitments specifically with what we refer to as the WIPO internet treaties internet treaties yes now these treaties are actually uh, two treaties concerned with copyright and related rights so we have uh, the WIPO copyright treaty mm -hmm. and the WIPO performances and phonograms treaty okay for the first treaty the WIPO copyright treaty uh, what, what are we under obligation for? I, what are well, our well obligations? actually these two treaties are really twin treaties. Uh, they, they have uh, practically similar or identical provisions. Mm -hmm. It's just that the provisions in one are applied to the copyright owners and the provisions in the other treaty are supposed to be for the benefit of the related rights owners, namely the performers and the phonogram producers okay so but, but then they both have uh, usually identical uh, provisions they both have identical provisions yes. these two internet treaties okay we will discuss more about the wipo internet treaties the twin treaties right after this short break please don't please stay with us 
We now return to Piracy Watch on DZRJ, 810 AM, the voice of the Philippines. Here is your host, Sarah Jane Sigita. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Piracy Watch. And joining me this morning is attorney Louis Calvario from the Copyright Division of the Intellectual Property Office. Again, before the break, we were talking about the WIPO Internet Treaties. They are twin treaties. Is that right, attorney Louis? That's right. So there are twin treaties that we are both acceding to and uh, we have acceded to to back in 2002 all right and we're giving uh, life to these treaties by amending our current laws in order to adopt the provisions of these two treaties again attorney louis what are the contents of these treaties that we acceded to okay uh, simply these two treaties extend copyright protection to the works disseminated over the internet so if you have a literary or artistic work which is uh, which you have uploaded or yeah. downloaded uh, in the internet that's already covered by copyright law in the same way if you have per- if you're a performer and if you have a performance which was uploaded in the internet or downloaded or if you are a phonogram producer or sound recording producer uh, uh, whose sound recording was also uploaded, uploaded. in the internet so you then rights. you also get yeah you get uh, you have rights in accordance with this treaties mm-hmm. so usually these rights cover only hard copy yes, hard copy true. versions of the work but now it's already extended in the internet to the parallel uh, the multiverse the, of the, the virtual uh, yes, the virtual world world usually attorney louis in a song uh there are more than three copyright at least three copyright owners you have the songwriter or the the, the, the lit- lyricist all right he's, okay. he's a copyright holder he then is you also have the uh, composer, the arranger, the, the composer, arranger. yes. Right, and also if they hire a performer, uh, he also has copyright over w- his Well, the performer would enjoy what we call a related right. Not actually a copyright, but a related right to copyright. Mm-hmm. In the sense that he has a right uh, to decide whether or not his performance could be recorded. Okay. So it's, it's, it's he who decides he whether who decides. W- whether or not uh, he wants his performance to be recorded. Recorded. So that also... Uh, uh, that particular performer also has copyright over that particular performance. Okay, we, before we discuss more about the WIPO Internet Treaties with Attorney mm-hmm. Louis Calvario, we're going to pause for a traffic and weather update from Charlie of Traffic.com. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Piracy Watch. Again, before we go back to Attorney Louis Calvario in discussing the WIPO internet, uh, twin internet treaties, we'd like to call on all registered trademark owners. The global arbiter of branding Superbrands Marketing International is on the lookout for strong registered trademarks to be awarded with the Superbrand status. If your company has what it takes to be internationally recognized as a Superbrand, please contact Superbrands at 728-8880. All right, Attorney Louis. So we were discussing about the WIPO Internet Treaties and uh, performance-related rights that authors, performers, and uh, producers have over works uploaded or downloaded from the internet. As we all know, it's so hard to police works, <laughs> uh, infringement cases over the internet. So, uh, uh, in, in, for example, in amending the laws to accede, I mean to adopt the provisions of these treaties, will you be able to solve technical problems that copyright holders or enforcement issues that copyright holders face? Hopefully, yes, because there are two uh, important provisions in these treaties which would be incorporated in, in the law. I am referring specifically to the provisions on technological measures and provisions on rights management information. Now, technological measures refer to any technology or device that restricts access Mm -hmm. to works uh, disseminated in the internet. So so in other words, uh, these are computer programs which will uh, control the downloading or the uploading. Yes, for example, you need a cap- key or a that's password. That's right, or, that's or, a or there's an encryption. Or there's an that's encryption. Right. Now, if you go around this technology and were able to download or upload something, mm-hmm. then you could be held liable under the law. Under the law. So that's punishable. <laughs> that will become puni- That, that will, will be become part punishable. of the law. And uh, well, actually, in, in this version of the bill, uh, it would be an aggravating circumstance to the crime of copyright infringement. infringement. So, uh, okay. So so far, it's not. We cannot say that it's infringement if we download music illegally from the internet. Is that the case? 
or not necessarily well it uh, with the incorporation of this uh, of this uh, of these provisions of this uh, from the 